I built that from the ground up. <laughs> that is the one megawatt solar array on the land of the Santa Rosa Band of the Cahuilla Indians, a unique project made possible through a unique partnership involving the tribe, the state of California, solar energy company Grid Alternatives, and nearby Anza Electric Cooperative, headquartered in Anza, California. My name is Vivian May Hamilton. I am an elder at the Santa Rosa Band of Kui Indians. One of the unique aspects of the project is how tribal volunteers were brought in to physically build the array, providing the labor to help defray costs while learning new skills they can bring to future projects here and elsewhere. When I got here, it was like rows and rows of steel beams sticking out of the ground. And they had a, a machine come in and push the holes down into the ground. And they went down, I think they said it, and went down about five to six feet. I'm 57 years old. I have six grandkids and one great grandson. And yes, it was. It was intimidating. And when I first got here, I thought, they told us we have five to six weeks to do it. And I was like, there's no way. There's no way we're going to do that in five or six weeks. Probably right about the third week, when we looked back on it, it was going up full tilt and we were moving. And apparently we were moving fast enough to where our superiors told us, we'll have it done in five weeks. And we did. As far as the collaboration goes, the Great Alternatives will do job training for some of our tribal members. So there was those five that had signed up and came out here and did all this work. Hi, my name is Vanessa Manat. I'm the Tribal Administrator for Santa Rosa Band of Coya Indians, and I'm also a tribal member. I think the lasting benefit is definitely, number one, the collaboration that we had a foundation with Grid Alternatives and Anza Electric, and knowing that there's different possibilities and opportunities moving forward, such as this, for the tribe. Our tribal members, they basically get a credit on their bill. So that's a very exciting thing for our tribal members as well, especially during these times. This basically is a one megawatt array, and it's built here uh, to serve specifically the residential members of the Santa Rosa tribe. Additionally, through an agreement with Santa Rosa and Grid Alternatives, we're able to utilize the output of the array for roughly another 200 uh, low and moderate income members of the cooperative. Hi, I'm Kevin Short, General Manager of Anza Electric Cooperative, and welcome to the Santa Rosa Solar Array. This is the first community solar project in the state of California that's specifically aimed at uh, low and moderate income uh, users. Grid Alternatives mission is to bring renewable energy solutions to disadvantaged communities and low income people across California. Hi, I'm Lisa Castellone. I am the Community Development and Tribal Program Manager for Grid Alternatives Inland Empire. The relationship with the Santa Rosa Tribe in this community solar project with the Enza Co-op happened because there is state funding available and we were looking to do a partnership with the cooperative and the tribal nation. And this seemed like a really good opportunity to bring the solar to the community. The cooperative benefits from adding to our renewable energy portfolio. You know, state mandates do require that we do that. Bottom line is, is the bottom line here, really. This is a, one of the lowest price resources we have because of the grant funding. And then all of the members of the cooperative benefit by us having more renewables on our system. Working with the co-op has been a, a, an extremely easy process as a, you dealing with the utility and the way the credits are going to be going from the utility to the people in the low-income community, it's going to work out very well. It really is a win-win for all involved, providing power at one of the lowest rates per kilowatt hour in the state while increasing ANZA EC's percentage of renewable energy by an impressive degree roughly about 35 percent right now. By the time we calculate the interconnection costs and whatnot, it works out to about 2.4 cents per kilowatt hour. The co-op's rate structure is runs about 30 to 35 percent below most investor-owned utilities. So in a net metering situation, uh, that value is credited back against uh, the retail bill at that retail cost. Uh, so in other words, um, 2.4 cents wholesale cost for us essentially is our cheapest resource. Uh, market on, in the California independent system operator, uh, for example, runs between six and eight cents a kilowatt hour. 
It's, it's one of those things after years you've been working on this project and you see the actual, you know, benefits that's going to be going back to the tribe. So that's going to be the ultimate, um, you know, opportunity for everybody to sit there and see that it's done. It was actually done by tribal members. You know, job training is a huge thing because we don't have a lot of job opportunities up here on the hill. So that's going to be something that's long lasting for generations to come. When I was actually working on it, I brought my oldest granddaughter came with one of the grandchildren. And uh, I had mentioned to them, I said, Grandma's building that. <laughs> and they all, they started laughing. They go, Grandma, no, you're not. <laughs> Come on now. And I said, yeah. I said, I'm really building that. <laughs> That's a good thing to instill in our young people that are here because we're so isolated in, in a rural area. They don't really have things to do. But if they know that they could accomplish something like that, I mean, what more could you give a child, you know, to instill that into their mind and, and have them out there working? Anything's possible. I, that's how I see it. I, I, like I said, I look back on this and it's like I had a part in that. I had a part in that and I did it. <laughs>